night on the south today. Teachers raise voices in protest today, blocking streets and filling town centres nationwide with a strong message. An Invercargill Parks officer is calling time on his career after half a century of caring for the city's beloved reptile relics. And an iconic Dunedin eatery is to host one of several sold-out charity dinners across the south in support of Cyclone Gabrielle Relief. Kia ora, good evening. I'm Hannah Wilkins. Hundreds of teachers and their allies took to the Octagon in Dunedin today to join a nationwide strike for better pay and better working conditions. A column of placard waving protesters snaking through the streets of central Dunedin. Hundreds of marching teachers converged on the Octagon today to join colleagues striking across the nation for better pay and resourcing in the education sector. The PPTA are one of several unions calling the combined strike in an effort to kickstart stalled negotiations with the Ministry of Education. We're trying to negotiate for conditions that will help our students to thrive. But unfortunately, those negotiations which have lasted for nine months now have, have not gotten us anywhere. Thousands of teachers also rallied in Christchurch's Victoria Square before marching on to the Ministry of Education offices. We've had, uh, you know, crises, we've had cyclones, we've had COVID, we've had uh, earthquakes, you know, there's so many things that are layering on, pot, on top and it's been really challenging to, to meet the needs of the children that have changed. So the needs have changed but the resourcing hasn't. Unions are also calling on the government to put more funding into the education sector in general. We're out here to say we'd like something better and we're ready to have that negotiation. We need this, this change to happen. We need the support in secondary education because we want to help our students. Organisers were happy with the turnout across the country, estimating about 50,000 turned out nationally to take part in the protests. Across the South, the South Today. A building fire at an industrial facility north of Invercargill kept fire crews from around Southlands very busy today. The blaze broke out in a cluster of industrial buildings near Makarewa Junction this morning. Crews from Wallacetown and Winton were among the regional teams standing alongside Invercargill firefighters battling the flames. Fire and Emergency New Zealand reported the fire had been contained just before noon. Investigations into the cause of the blaze are still ongoing. Best known to locals as the Tuatara man, Lindsay Hazley is retiring from his role at Southland Museum after 50 years. Before he goes, the Invercargill legend is passing on his decades of research and experience to the next generation. A changing of the guard for one of Southland's most beloved attractions. Invercargill's Tuatara display is only temporarily closed, but its kaitiaki of over 50 years is going for good. Lindsay Hasley has cared for Southland Museum's resident Tuatara population since the early 1970s, but now he's passing the baton. They would have a different journey to myself, but uh, be mainly a kaitiaki, just a guardianship of the Tuatara, and um, hopefully uh, once things get all planned and in place, some advocacy may kick off as well. Exploring the Hokanui Hills as a kid, he attributes a lot of his early passion to his rural upbringing in Dipton. I had pet lizards running around my father's um, glass house, dug holes in the ground and had frogs and tadpoles and did all the sort of country kid stuff. It was a love of art that drew Hasley to the Southland Museum, but a fascination with the resident Tuatara that kept him there. Not much was known about the reptiles when the program began. Hasley says a lot of today's knowledge was learned through trial and error. But overall the journey has been a positive one and he's proud of the museum's successes. We've probably produced over 150, 180 Tuatara since our breeding program started in the 1980s. The Tuatara are being held in a confidential location until the new centre opens, but Hasley's satisfied he's leaving their future in good hands. In Invercargill, the South Today. The creation of an Aramoana Ark can now continue after a long-fought battle with the Dunedin City Council. Just Dewey started building the boat 13 years ago to use as a self-sufficient living area in a response to climate change and the threat of sea level rise. The council argued the structure was a house and it was subject to building regulations. Dewey says they have since backed down. It's been a bit of a process. Council were unsupportive for a wee while and they've now recently changed their stance and we're cooperating, which is really great. With the two parties coming to an agreement, 
He can now continue with the build as he works towards making her seaworthy. In Dunedin, the South Today. A major roading project running through the middle of Queenstown is stirring up clouds of controversy. Dirt. Dirt everywhere. Ongoing construction on Henry Street in Queenstown is not just blocking traffic, it's also kicking up a dust problem for residents and local businesses. Matt Davidson manages the MyPad Hotel on Henry Street. He says he and his staff have to regularly clean windows and floors as everything gets caked with construction dust. He's frustrated to be facing yet another disruption after shutting for two years due to COVID-19. And he says the Queenstown Lakes District Council are not offering any solutions to the problem. In response, Council PR Manager Sam White acknowledges the disruption, asking residents to be patient as the council progresses the Queenstown Arterial Road project. In Queenstown, the South Today. The owner of a popular Dunedin cafe is opening its doors to fundraise for the Cyclone Gabrielle Relief Fund. Best Cafe is aiming to raise money for those affected in the North Island through a sold-out charity dinner. Bluff oysters and blue cod ready for hungry customers. The owner of Dunedin's Best Cafe, Jessica Marks, has decided to do her bit to support the Cyclone Gabrielle Relief Fund by holding a special charity dinner. It's one of a number of restaurants hosting charity dinners for the Relief Fund. Most are scheduled for next Monday night. However, Otago's anniversary day on the 20th has pushed out Best Cafe's event by a day. Next Tuesday night on the 21st of March, we are having a private um, function for, as a charity event um, for the uh, Cyclone Gabriel Relief Fund. Tickets for next Tuesday's charity dinner sold out in just a few days with diners set to enjoy a three-course meal of the finest southern delicacies. We're going to be offering oysters, um, it's comfort food, so we're going to also be sticking to kind of what we do here at Big Cafe, fish and chips um, and chocolate brownie with ice cream. Other Dunedin businesses are also getting on board. All the food is donated by local suppliers and there'll be live music from a local musician. That's really great, is that a lot of suppliers are coming on board to help contribute as well. Um, yeah, so doors open at 6, we've got Luke Hooley playing, it's going to be relaxed, it's going to be a great atmosphere and we're going to try and raise as much money as we can. The team are hoping to raise up to $3,000 to help the cyclone relief efforts in the Hawke's Bay. In Dunedin, the South Today. F.I. Yarkane, still to come on the South Today, an iconic Gore pub comes down in spectacular fashion to make way for new homes, and a Dunedin cat living life on the edge returns home after three years on the streets. Drive away your way with three incredible offers on the Honda CRV Adventure Ready Range. Choose from 2.9% finance with zero deposit, third 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 finance, or lease a new CRV from just $136 per week. These offers are only available for a limited time, so be in quick. From Honda. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Garador Dunedin, delivering quality, stylish garage doors in Dunedin for over 17 years. New doors, replacement doors and maintenance are all part of Garador's quality service. Garador Dunedin offers a full range of modern quality doors to suit any home. Come visit the team. Aero, used by Australia's top bowlers with their unique Z-Scoop grip that redefines the game. Machined with robotics for unparalleled accuracy, Aero, same line every time.
Otago! My mate John loves Otago, and this anniversary weekend, he's showing his true colours. 24% off plus 24 months interest-free. 100% local for over 30 years. John's friendly team have been delivering great furniture deals and super service to the good people of Dunedin. 24% off and 24 months interest-free. get that furniture from? Stafford Street. And my mate John... Welcome back. The demolition of a long-standing pub in Gore got underway yesterday, making space for a new housing block. A crowd of school pupils gathered at the Longford Tavern site to watch the demolition, with work crews trying to do their parts for the environment. Chants echoing through the car park as East Gore School's principal gets ready to put her skills to the test on the excavator. The demolition of Gore's Longford Tavern smashed into action yesterday after Kayanga Ora purchased the property last year with plans to build 20 brand new homes. Rael Bush Transport have taken on the project with the goal of finishing the demo in around four weeks. They're also aiming to recycle over 90% of the wreckage. Um, we've achieved similar targets on other projects and we believe 90% will be achievable for this one. The demolition crew drew a crowd as East Gore School pupils and teachers visited the site the children lit up as they saw the excavator at work, with the driver even putting on a few theatrics for his audience. No, it was, it was great to have the kids along. Um, they really enjoyed it, and Tom put on a bit of a show for them, so it was, it was great. Kayanga Ora are currently drawing up the plans for the new housing complex, with final resource and building consent applications still to be lodged. In Gore, the South Today. One Dunedin cat has proven they really do have nine lives, returning home after going missing three years ago. Buster the cat went for a wander from his usual spot on the sofa in his Wardrumville home back in 2019. When he didn't return, his owners feared they'd never see him again. And while all of his three-year vacation is unknown, the last 17 months were spent on a Brighton farm with Dr. Glynis Blackburn after she found him crying on her doorstep. She took Buster to the vet last week to get his eyes checked, where the veterinarians made a massive discovery. And they'd scanned his microchip and discovered it was long lost Buster. So the whole office heard about it that afternoon. They were pretty excited for me. So yeah, it was pretty awesome. And then we went and got him that night. The reunited kitty is currently scared of visitors but McBratney says Buster has made himself right back at home. In Dunedin, the South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. Around 50,000 teachers and supporters rallied across the country today, hoping to kickstart pay negotiations. In Vicargal Museums, Tuatara Keeper is retiring after 50 years of caring for the town's treasured reptiles. And tickets quickly sold out to try Fresh Bluff Oysters at Dunedin's Best Cafe Cyclone Gabrielle Fundraiser Dinner. And now a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. And we welcome the editor, Barry Stewart. Hi there, Barry. Hello, Heather. What can we expect in tomorrow's paper? Well, Lake, Lake Onslow uh, storage uh, scheme is still on the table, we understand. And uh, Central, Otago lead, Central Otago leaders are uh, excited about that prospect and mm -hmm. predict uh, big things uh, for the multi-billion dollar proposal. So right. Uh, so that's it's gone another stage. So we'll see. It's still not a done deal, but right. Um, oh, we'll look forward to seeing what that next stage still, is. It's still uh, in consideration. Mm -hmm. So uh, the teacher strike, of course, we uh, took a look at that, and mm -hmm. we spoke to a uh, primary school teacher, uh, a, a new primary school teacher, who says uh, her passion for the job uh, has been crushed by the working conditions uh, she faces every day. So that's uh, a fairly impactful. 
reaction Absolutely. to all that. Yeah. Um, and another beloved Dunedin music venue uh, has fallen victim of uh, business difficulties and yeah. noise complaints. Uh, so uh, more on that story in the paper tomorrow. And in the sports section, the lift out, we have a look at uh, the Neil Wagner story, our cricket hero. <laughs> uh, cricket writer Adrian Sacconi here has a look at the background and what to what uh, makes nice. Neil Wagner uh, to get the call up. Fire. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> lovely. Thank you okay. for sharing this evening. Thank you. And time now for a look at tomorrow's weather. The South Today weather proudly brought to you by Mulmat. The skin cancer detection specialists. Looking at the situation, prepare for strong to near gale force northerlies in some spots tonight. Then a cold front will move over the southern districts tomorrow morning, bringing cooler southwesterly winds. Heading to the top of the South Island. Strong north to northwest winds right the way through here tomorrow with rain. By numbers, a high of 20 in Nelson, 19 degrees in Greymouth, and a warm but wet and very windy 25 in Christchurch. Travelling to South Canterbury and North Otago. Ashburton's heading for a high of 25 tomorrow with strong northerlies and late rain. To Timaru, expect a wet 24 with south westerlies. And down to Uamaru, a wet and windy afternoon with 21 as the high. Heading westwards to the central lakes. Gusty westerlies and rain are on their way. Wanaka and Queenstown both head for a high of 19 degrees tomorrow. And Alexandra gets knocked around a bit too, but with 20 as the high. Heading further south, the strong winds continue. Through here, there'll be strong south westerlies and expect showery highs of 16 degrees in Gore, Balclutha and the Catlins. And down to the deep south, it'll be raining tonight as those strong northwesterlies pick up and the temperature drops to 14 in Invercargill. Tomorrow's looking mostly cloudy with showers and changing winds that'll be strong to start but ease in the afternoon and up to 16 as the high. Into the weekend, Saturday will be fine with sunny periods with some cloud and cool winds with a high of 18 degrees. And finally, heading to Dunedin. Some rain again tonight with strong gusty northerlies and a 15 degree low. Tomorrow's looking mainly fine as the northerlies drop back and switch to a cooler south westerly late in the day, which will also bring some low clouds and some showers after a 21 degree day. Then Saturday, well it marks the beginning of anniversary weekend and it comes with cool south westerlies and afternoon cloud along with a high of 18 degrees. And that's the news this Thursday. For the latest news and videos from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz. You can follow Channel 39 on YouTube to catch our news bulletins on demand. And you can also now follow us on Facebook. Just search for The South Today NZ to see our favourite stories from around the regions. We'll see you again tomorrow. Ka kite popo. Public interest journalism funded through New Zealand On Air.